<laughs> my name is Myra. And I'm so chill, and this is Besties in Business B2B TV. And today we are here with Meredith Vega Perez, who is one of the founders of Belle Fleur. It's a floral and fragrance company, and you've probably seen some of their beautiful candles, diffusers at any luxury department store or boutique near you. I love it. Tell us a little bit about kind of the genesis of Belle Fleur and then sure. going into fragrance. Absolutely. Well, it's been almost 20 years since we started the Belle Fleur, wow. the brand, and wow. it's, it's time has flown by and honestly it's been an incredible journey and it doesn't feel all that long ago I remember the very early days of it just being my mom and myself just the two of us doing everything from buying the flowers conditioning the flowers designing the flowers delivering the flowers <laughs> every, every and, then, and then the invoicing we did every step along the way and as we hired, in fact, our first hire, his name is Malik. He's still with the company, and wow. and it's so it's it's very cathartic actually, and it it has grown into something so beautiful and something I'm very very proud of. It's my first baby, yeah. um, even though I have two daughters. It's <laughs> it's really my first love, and I. I got the bug. I got the entrepreneurial bug. I think my grandfather, my grandfather is the first entrepreneur in the family, my dad then, and my mom, and then myself, and hopefully my daughters will understand the importance of having something of your own and being super proud of it and yeah. rolling up your sleeves and putting every ounce of energy and passion into it. What are the things that from you know the beginning you still love to do and that you would never sort of hire somebody to do for you? You know, I love I love meeting my clients. I love spending time with my clients and um, understanding their vision. That is like the most surprising answer. No, I, I do. That. I get. I'm a true romantic, and yeah. I get. I get carried away in their story, uh -huh. um, and it's not. It's not about necessarily Belle Fleur. It's about how do I take their vision, right. and understand it fully. Understand where they're coming from. It's not. It's the yes. It's their dress. It's the venue. It's the season. It's their color palette. Because now things have changed, and they are. They do play creative director just as much as I do. Right. So it's this collaborative. Um, exchange of ideas and I love that I love I love that from day one I still love it now yeah. um, and, the, and the clients motivate me to constantly push myself mm -hmm. uh, to find new ideas to look for interesting color combinations and textures and transform a space into what they've always imagined and what they're gonna fall in love with the day of their wedding so tell me about I guess when you started though, it always, Bill Fleur from the very beginning, to, it seemed mm -hmm. to me, always was a little bit more than just being a place to go and get your flowers. Right. Mm -hmm. um, was that a conscious decision to sort of establish it as a brand? And what choices in the small term, in the beginning early stages did you do to make that happen? Right. And how has that helped you now? Well, I am a brand junkie. You know, I, I come from Calvin Klein. From my yesteryear, before I started mm -hmm. flowers, I was in fashion. and. The, to me, there was nobody, especially back in the early 90s, that was truly taking a brand and, and owning it mm -hmm. like the way Calvin did. And I think I learned so much um, about branding back then, and I apply it to my business each and every day. Everything that we send out has a stamp of Belle Fleur on it. There's a look, there's a prettiness. Um, we're not about reinventing the wheel. We've never been an avant-garde design firm. We've never been the indie sort of direction of bohemian chic. Yes, we could do it. Yes, we could do sleek, sexy, and modern, but we're all about the pretty. And I realize yeah. that there's nothing wrong with being yeah. pretty, and that's what we do best. We make yep. rooms pretty, we make brides pretty, and our bouquets come to life and and exude that sort of energy. What made you decide that flowers, like it was gonna be flowers, right? And then how did you get started? So I was in fashion and I was utterly bored. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I, I went to Parsons both in New York and Paris. I thought I was gonna be the next American designer. I really, I, I still love fashion and uh -huh. it's still everything that I learned at, in school is quite applicable. But I am very soft-spoken and I don't have that competitiveness okay. to climb that corporate right. ladder. And I'm a girl's girl and I just, you know, I like to share, I like to, I like to experience, I like mm -hmm. to bond. and. Flowers, for me, it kind of sounds a bit cliche. Um, it is, there's something very emotional about it. Yeah. It taps into my emotional side, yeah. and, I, and I love it. I love mm -hmm. it, it's still to this day, I can go to the flower market and I can get really carried away with, this, with scents, with the way a certain flower looks, the line, the fluidity of, of their line. And there's just something very um, 
fulfilling about being in the floral business. It's truly the most romantic industry in the world. I can't yeah. think of anything more romantic. When you decided to go into fragrance, yes. how much in-house knowledge did you have of that industry? How much time is spent researching? How much time is spent bringing other people in? Because mm -hmm. I think sometimes people have ideas and they're like, I would love to do this, or I'm passionate about scent even. Like, right. they don't know where to go with that. And I, I'm just curious. So. I had no knowledge okay. at all. I, I had an that. idea. <laughs> yeah. I had no knowledge. Mm -hmm. I am I'm. I was naive. Um, yeah. And there's nothing wrong with being naive. But I was really curious. Uh -huh. And I was really passionate. And take yeah. curiosity and, and passion. And that's a great combination for making uh, something come to life. Yeah. Um, and I think because I, had not, I, I don't have a lot of fears yeah. when it comes to taking a business from nothing and making it into something, um, it was running with it. It's take, just taking a, a little concept and running it. Originally, the fragrance business started by uh, an idea that I had of just gifting our clients with one particular scent that I loved, which was Mayan tuberose. Right. And it's a beautiful, uh, warm and rich and heady and seductive tuberose and gardenia and vanilla fragrance. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's beautiful. And I really wanted to share uh, this scent with my clients mm -hmm. and whether it was a wedding or somebody's house that I was decorating and all of a sudden Barney's heard about it and they said can you do a collection we'd love to launch more than just one particular fragrance in the store and it happened kind of organically yeah. so it wasn't a vision of all of a sudden breaking into the fragrance right. business right. and taking it by storm it was really just kind of this ah, let me just create a candle a scented candle and I so went it was to, more like a marketing idea it that was. just turned into a whole new it company turned, and then as soon as I started with my second and third fragrance now we're up to 17 fragrances I had to wow. stop I like this is enough this is <laughs> this is plenty of fragrances and now it's about kind of the expansion of going into the reed diffusers and uh, we're now developing personal fragrance and bath and body and that's going to be the evolution that's the five-year plan what do you think is the key to maintaining a luxury brand over such a long period of time that it still stays fresh but like mm -hmm. it maintains its quality mm -hmm. yeah you know, we're attracted to a certain look, mm -hmm. and that, that look is, for me, if I was to find the right description, it would be quiet opulence. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's not about being showy, it's not about being ostentatious, but it is about this sort of subtle luxury. Mm -hmm. um, and I think we embody that. The flowers that we work with, flowers like peonies and garden roses and sweet peas and ranunculus, the list can go on and on. But there is a refinement. There is this very refined look. It's tailored. It's sophisticated. Um, I was talking to a designer yesterday. We were creating something for a client who wanted rustic. We can do rustic very well, but it's not that kind of earthy, yeah. dirty, yeah. Um, too na it's not na rustic. It's not. It's Belfler yeah. rustic. Yeah. Um, so everything that we do, whether it's cutting edge, cut, I'm sorry, whether it's cutting edge modern or whether it's rustic, it still feels like it's a bell fleur bouquet or arrangement. Right. There's this, con it's this steadfast direction yeah. with our purchasing, our designing, the vessels that we use. It's very consistent. Yeah. There, there's, a, there's a reason for everything that we're selecting yeah. to stay yeah. consistent and cohesive. So I, one of the things I wanted to talk about is working with your mom. Yes, which has been amazing. <laughs> okay, yeah. and tell us more about that, like of people who start businesses with their, you know, parents or... Well, it's a fully family business because your husband works with you on the fragrance as well. Yeah. Does. You know, it has been, um, it's been incredible to work with my mom. Uh, she was a wedding planner before she was in the floral business. She worked up in Westchester as a planner, and the idea was we both started this business together that she would actually be doing the planning and I would do the designing, and it changed direction. Sometimes when you set out a certain way, it yeah. doesn't always end up that way. Uh, we are so much alike, but yet we're so different. Right. Uh -huh. We're so different. In fact, she's probably more modern than I am, and I'm probably <laughs> a little bit more um, classic. Yeah. So, you know, it's, it's kind of interesting that we have this little reversal of roles in yeah. the company. We also, we, it's very emotional for me to talk about having family involved in business yeah. because um, 
it's been so rewarding mm -hmm. to work with my mom each and every day for 19 years. Yeah. Even when we have a day off and we're not together on a Sunday uh -huh. or she takes a day <laughs> off on a Tuesday, we're still on the phone all day long talking yes. about something or if we're getting together for, with family for dinner, we're still talking about that client that yeah. we have to wrap our heads around together as a team. She's been a phenomenal business partner. What advice would you go back and give your younger self? You know, because I do a lot of mentoring now, yes. um, I hear myself talk about what I would do different. Yes. And I don't know if it's something different. I think it's a different time right now, and I don't think things that I could um, give advice for what I learned yesterday would actually work today. Totally. Um, I'm still learning. Yeah. I'm, I'm 19 years in, but I'm still learning. I'm not necessarily mm -hmm. um, there to, to offer a million different directions of advice. Um, but the advice that I would give is definitely to find something that you're passionate about, mm -hmm. that you really believe in, yeah. so it doesn't feel like work. Mm -hmm. um, yes, there are stresses uh, of owning a business, but if you're passionate about it and you really love it to yeah. the core, um, it doesn't feel like work. And that I think is so important. It's not about, you can't look at, how am I gonna make a, a quick buck? Right. How am I going to impress? How am I going to lure this client in? It starts here first. You yeah. have got to really believe in yourself. You've got to believe in that product. You've got mm -hmm. to fall in love with it like it's your first baby. Yes. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. no, that's, that's how you mo most effectively then sell it, right? You do, you <laughs> do. You really believe in it and you really love it. How did the internet and being able to process things online yeah. change your business um, from like do you feel that it reinforces right. your your brand and that people can come to your site and actually just purchase directly from you and you don't get kind of lost in the merchandising always like it's like I, I don't know I think it's because it, you've got a beautiful site and it's mm -hmm. like I know I noticed like it's like you can order arrangements you can also order fragrance and I think that it's a tool yeah. I think it's a tool of marketing mm -hmm. um, I take it very seriously I think that it's done num wonders to our business. Mm -hmm. It's done wonders in the sense that we're easy to find now and you can really learn about us from different angles, from the About Us page, about the product page, about the PR page. Um, but once again, you know, I do love that human connection. Right. Um, but it is important to have. But it, I, was, I was probably knocked to the ground a bit by one of our um, gals in the office, Mary Kate, she said to me when she first started, within three months of starting, um, and she's a dynamo. I mean, she's just this incredible, fierce. Um, I don't even. I don't, her title now. We just gave her a title, and I'm 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 drawing a blank. Don't kill me, Mary Kate. Um, but she came to me and she said, you know, you're doing a really lousy job on on Instagram. And, and I said, really? And this is three months in to her job. I said, really? She said, yeah, I could really do wonders with it. You're really not, you know, it's just not hip. It's not cool enough. I said, just take it, just do it. And I was actually relieved because yes. I was stressing over yes. content. I was stressing over what are they going to think of me when I post this? Yep. And I've never been that type of person. I've, I'm not a competitive person by nature, but I found myself stressing over what I'm going to put out there. What's the message I want to say today? Yes. Mm -hmm. And when I gave that responsibility to her, I felt a huge weight lifted. Yes. Um, and she's done a phenomenal job. And it made me once again realize that delegating is huge. <laughs> it's really important uh -huh. to kind of pick and choose the things that you're good at yep. and having the, having the openness and communication with your team yes. when they could be forthcoming and say to you, you know what, L let, me take, let me take over. <laughs> um, and it's humbling, yes, but at yeah. the same time, it's refreshing to know that I'm approachable, that they right. can come to three me. Right, three months in, she mm -hmm. was like, she's not going to fire me if I tell her exactly. that. Yeah. Exactly, <laughs> the other she's owned it. The thing is, is like, if you've done a good job with your homework of, of distilling what that brand is, mm -hmm. like somebody can take it over because they know what the message should be and exactly. they kind of know what the quality level should be. Like, mm -hmm. it's an interesting, like, like if you've done that groundwork, mm -hmm. then it's easier to delegate, right? For like, sure. It is. Yeah. It definitely yeah. is. And I think our team, a phenomenal team, and they work so hard and they really do understand the vision. Yeah. And when I come over to the design table, which yeah. is several times during the afternoon, will analyze each and every arrangement because once again, yes, it's got to look like a Belle Fleur signature style, but I, I explain to our team that they have such an important job. They right. are carrying the sentiment of 
of love and you know what's more important than that yeah yeah what is more important i know than that? oh my gosh the, so chill is such a romantic literally right now I she's know. like crying i know <laughs> i'm like i'm like so like about to cry no but it's true and i think but the thing is is that if you can get any job any any business and like boil it distill it down to the trans how is it transmitting love mm -hmm. that's like it makes it all such a better job. Like it makes mm -hmm. whatever you're doing so much clearer because you're like, is this like the best way to conduct this scenario? Mm -hmm. Is this the best, like, are we putting out the most quality work? Like, so like, mm -hmm. I think that it's just a beautiful way to get back to like what your like business yeah, is. I do. And I tell the design team, read the message, Yeah. read the message before you start designing. <gasps> oh, so you understand, you know, who we're actually designing for. And yes, you know, it's great when John Legend calls and he orders flowers for his wife. Right. And I'm not talking about like who's calling. Calling. I'm really no. talking about right. who is calling no, not, not like, and what's your reason. Yeah, it's like, yeah. <laughs> no, it's, because he's like, I love you. You and want you wonderful. exactly. You want to yeah. actually understand that message that somebody's yes. sending because somebody's ill and they're sending flowers to a hospital. And yeah. very yes. often, you know, I'm the one going to the hospital to deliver the flowers. Yeah. I actually want to be constantly yeah. involved in the different components of business. Right. I don't just want to kind of be at the helm and say, okay, you design, you right. purchase, you answer phones. Right. I actually love delivering the flowers. That's so nice. But it's very clear that you care about seeing how the flowers touch people. Yes. I do. I, I love that reaction. Yes. And there's nothing like when you go into a bridal suite or when, when the bride's getting dressed yes. and you hand her her bouquet the day yes. of her wedding, hours before she's walking down the aisle. Yeah. That expression yeah, is, is amazing. invaluable. It's amazing. It is incredible. I mean, you guys get to yeah. experience it all the time, but for me, it's literally, I don't get to see her throughout the rest, throughout of, the the rest of the day. That's my one moment with her. Thank you Thank so, you so you much for coming. Thanks for having me. And what you guys are doing, uh, you're just empowering women and you're, you're connecting the dots and you're putting us all together and making it very real. Uh, the ups and the downs of owning a business or being involved in, in this industry. So I commend you for what you're doing. Thank you and so, so much. Thank you so much for having me today. And Meredith is at Belfleur, New York on yes. social media. And um, we are at Besties in Biz. And um, you can check out this video and all the videos at bestiesinbusiness.com. Thank you. Thank you.